right, this morning and afternoon, depending on who you're talking to right now, I have the privilege of talking with Kate Moran. She is uh, one of the stars of the upcoming film, uh, Savage State, or can you pronounce it to me in French? Because every time I looked it up, it gave me the French uh, title, not the English. It's uh, in French, it's l'état sauvage. Yeah, I, I took French when I was in school. And my dad always hammered me about my accent. He's very good with languages. I am not. <laughs> uh, can you tell us a little bit about the film? Because it is a very, very interesting film from a different perspective on something that here in the United States, we usually see from one perspective. So it's, um, it's, it's a Western and it follows a French family at the, I guess it's, it, it's, the outbreak of the civil war, or it's starting to really uh, heat up. The North is is slowly kind of gaining gaining on the the South, and um, this French family realizes that war is is imminently going to be in their region, and so they have decided to flee to back to France, and it's sort of their road trip to in their attempt to get to the boat in order to to go back to France um, and all of the adventures and misadventures that happen along the way and I am one of those misadventures I I before we get into your character I want to talk a little bit about the overall aspect of the film being that it is by a French filmmaker David um, Perrault is that him? Perrault, yes. um, I find that he's able to take some liberties that some that sometimes an American filmmaker wouldn't do be able to. I specifically notice in the way that he portrays some of the Northern soldiers, especially mm -hmm. in, in like the ballroom and things mm -hmm. like that. I, I really appreciated that. And then also from an outsider's point of view, because I honestly don't often think about all of the other immigrants who were stuck in mm -hmm. between in the war, Spaniards and French, for example, who were uh, told by Napoleon they needed to keep a neutral um position yeah um i mean i don't know if it's a liberty because he's french or if it's just a a perspective to see i think that um obviously the fact that the civil war was what what was about slavery the perspective is that the North is obviously on the right side of history in this, but war is war. And I think that when you have a bunch of very young people with guns unprepared for the elements that they're faced with, it doesn't really matter what side you're on, everybody kind of becomes desperate. And so that's what's portrayed more than these guys from the North coming in and being against the South. I think it shows more the, the, uh, stupidity of youth in the in in the face of having too much power yeah it's, it's an interesting point because you know we to this day we still give guns to to a younger crowd uh but yeah. that's here neither here nor there um your character betty i i really wanted more of her in the film <laughs> well thank you <laughs> very very she's complex there's nothing that's cookie cutter about her can you tell us a little bit about her um, I mean, I, I, I loved her. I loved this character. I, w I was really, uh, I, I, I was sad to let her go after, at the end of the shoot because she, she is, she is complex and she's, she's really fun. Um, that's what I, I liked hanging out in her skin is, is I guess the best way I can, I can put it because she's, she's, she's sort of the element of the film that is, that is nature you know she's very she's very wild she's completely outside of the codes of these girls who are sort of trying to get back to a place where they can remain civilized and she's sort of the antithesis of that and that's what i really liked about her and 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 what she kind of brought to to the landscape that they were in i felt like uh, a lot of the decision making that she makes is more instinct rather than uh, than having a necessary a, a plan. There, mm -hmm. There's a sequence in the film where I think she's going one direction, and then she surprises me by making a different decision, which goes against what I had 
thought was going to happen a couple of scenes before. Is that, is that something in the character? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's something that I, I really enjoyed playing with is that is that uh, element of surprise that she has where even I didn't really know what she was going to do next. You know, there's a, there's a scene when she meets um, Esther for the first time, who's played by Alice Uzaz, and, and she's, I mean, I didn't even know, you know, like obviously I knew because I knew what the scene was, but I, I kind of played it with like, she really could lunge at her and slash her throat just as easily as she could give her a kiss, just like a wolf. Like when you meet a wild animal in the in the woods, you don't really know right. how they'll react, and that's for me that that's very much how her personality was. That even she was sort of surprised by herself that she didn't know what was coming next. Obviously, this was written and directed by David. How much of the character maybe were you able to input in as putting your own little touches to her? Um, I mean, he. David wrote the script and, and I, I read it um, early on and he he had seen me in, in another film and um, it just called me up and asked me if I would like to play this part. And then when I read it, I, I mean, I loved her and, and told him yes. So um, obviously she was already on the page and in David's mind, but he obviously had me in mind to play her because I would bring something to it that he saw inside of me. and. Um, and I, I think that that's, that's fair to say, no matter, who, you know, depending on who is cast in a, in, a, in a role, what they bring to it makes it completely one, one thing or another. Um, so I, I'm sure that my portrayal brought something to her that, I mean, hopefully David was looking for and was also surprised by, um, but that was just sort of something that we found directly on set. We didn't really speak about too much. Yeah, because I, I noticed, you know, sometimes in, in there's not a, there's not too many expressions as as your as your characters move along. So I, I like that. I like the mystery of it. I like like we just talked about the instinct. So I I wasn't already like oh she's she's the, she's the bad guy. She's gonna do this or you know. She... No, I mean I think that no matter as a as as an actor, I think no matter who you're playing, you can't look at your character and think you're the bad guy because then you just sort of end up being a cliche like uh, right. I, I don't know like the just like the the villain in a in in a comic book or something as though it's just sort of defined that this is the good guy and this is the bad guy whereas in life things are much more complicated than that <laughs> so can uh can you talk a little bit about the the film, film visually so sometimes I think in, in independent films, you don't necessarily get these like grand scale visuals. But I think in this case for Savage State, you, you, you guys probably chose very, very good locations where maybe not filming, you can, you can see the grand scale of everything. But once, once you sit down and watch the final product, it's, it's beautiful, it's stunning. Not, not saying that it wasn't on set, but just, just the overall picture of what David was trying to accomplish. I mean, that was the the part of it that I was really blown away by as a as a view as an audience member as a as a viewer of the film because obviously, um, I mean, my character is wasn't there every day either, so I also didn't see all of the loca locations that they were on and and the ones that I was on. Obviously, when you're living it. I mean, obviously, it, I mean, it was gorgeous. We were on these horses in the middle of a desert in Spain and in the mountains in the middle of the snow in in Quebec. I mean, it was literally, it was literally something out of The Shining at one point, like between the hotel we were in and the snow everywhere. Um, and it was freezing. So obviously we, the, the sets that we were on were at the actual places and they were beautiful, but you don't know what's being captured until you actually see the film and the quality of what, what David and his team, um, you know, his, his, his crew and his scouts and everything managed for an independent film that's, a, you know, a, a, and also a period piece and all of that, I, I was, really impressed by. I thought it was really beautiful what he did. And um, I was speaking the other day with, with for an interview and, and I realized that for me, like the, I, I said that the, the weather was a character in the film. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's, 
obviously, you know, as you kind of re remember what was going on, that is very true because there was something about that 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 was an added person kind of in the in the space when it was very, very cold, when it was, I mean, at one point we had to hold off shooting because it was raining one day when we were in the desert, which like, when does it rain in the desert? And, <laughs> you know, the, that's a, sort of a rarity. And, and so, you know, all of those kind of things that were really sort of out in the elements because we weren't just on some big studio production where everybody could just like go to their, 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 their sort of, fancy corners or whatever and, and wait it out. It was sort of like really being in it. And uh, I think that that helped. O overall, along with that, I think that you guys were able to really successfully blend in a variety of different themes. You have like, a, you know, the, the love, tri I, I call it a love triangle uh, between you guys. And then also uh, some, a little bit of, uh, Oh, shoot, I forgot the word. Like, vo you know, you're, they're they're the food, yeah. aspects, super uh, supernatural aspects, and then Western aspects. But it didn't necessarily felt like forced. It felt like mm -hmm. it all. It was just all part of that period, and it blended naturally. Mm -hmm. uh, and it called me for good storytelling. Good. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, I, I I agree. I think that there there's an element of uh, of uh, I guess I guess what would it be magical realism or something like that it, that 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 is thrown that is thrown into this kind of Western genre that that is usually not necessarily um, portrayed. You know that there's sort of like this this mis mysticism that that also has an underlying theme that that is. That I, that I think is interesting to to throw in there. And that's quite clever. Well, I hope everybody gets a chance to see this film. Uh, it's gonna be too. on demand digital, uh, January 29th, 2021. Kate, thank you so much for your time and congratulations on the film. Thank uh, you very I much. Hope to see you again. Great, thank you. Okay. Bye, have All a right. good rest of your day. Thank you, you have a pleasant afternoon. <laughs> thank you, bye.